Hey, it's Laura, and oh man, I had a hard morning, uh, but I'm feeling good now, and I credit it completely to the fact that I decided to stop acting like a lump and act alive for a minute. I went for a walk around the block, I took a shower, I blew, I blew my hair dry, I put on a dress, and then I threw on some makeup, and I feel like a whole new woman. So... You know, people have been telling me to just act like it's a normal day. And I've been like, it's not going to work. And, and it worked. So I'm happy to report that I'm feeling a little more alive and a little more hopeful than I was this morning because it, it was a dark one today. Um, my guest today is Jennifer Mudge, a Broadway actress, a really wonderful woman, and uh, a friend that I haven't seen in too long. So I'm excited to catch up with her to hear how everybody is doing. Um, I want to thank everybody for the big hugs that they've been sending me all day because I posted a few social media posts being like, what if I never get hugged again? I don't know when I'm going to ever get to like interact with an actual human being in a physical way again. And I've gotten so many lovely messages. So thank you. And that's how I'm doing today. Please uh, let me know in the comments how you're doing, um, whether it's about the Broadway shutdown or about coronavirus or about the quarantine or just about everyday life. We are here for each other. It's a safe space. And um, I'm going to go ahead and invite in today's special guest, Jennifer Mudge. For her to accept, but I have a feeling she will. Hi! Oh, oh my God, we did it. <laughs> What'd you say? We did it. Let me see if I can... Uh... I'm just gonna pop up the volume. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Okay. Can you okay. hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. Hi, friend. Hi. I want to let you know that I um I got out my rare <laughs> Rocky uh, Broadway sippy cup from the Winter Garden Theater. Uh Jenny's last appearance on Broadway was in Rocky. And um so this is my I, I usually don't drink out of the ones that I only have one of because they're for display only. No, that's definitely a limited edition one. Damn it. I'm sure I have one somewhere. And I should have dug it up, but maybe if we, yeah. Oh, I did, because I am sipping something. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, uh, what, I mean, I what else is there? What else is there? Do you look, somebody says, hi, Jenny. Is it, do you know S. Kurt Zuba? Oh my God, that's friend of yours. Kurt Zuba of the Irishman. She's my stepmom and the Irishman. We're the oh, same wow. age, but yeah. that's how stepmoms go. Hi, honey. Aww. Hi, love. Oh my God, that's so fun. This is so fun. This is one such a good idea. I'm so glad. Of... Oh, I'm so glad it. you could do it. You know, one of the best things about doing these together is that it alerts both your Instagram followers and mine, and then they can sort of mm. pollinate and get to know the people who don't know you can get to know you, and the people who don't know me can get to know me, and the people who know know both of us are like are just having a great day. Have to catch up with both. Assuming a coin's going to see this somewhere, so he'll get it from oh, both. Kelly O'Coin, yeah, I've been yeah. talking to him about doing it, doing one too. Oh, so. he will. Yeah, I mean, so okay. um, Kelly O'Coin is um, Dollar Bill on Billions, and was also Pastor. What was the pastor on the yeah. American? Pastor Tim. Pastor Tim, right? <laughs> and um, um, and we met because he and Jenny did a play together. Uh, what was the name of that play? Alicia Silverstein. Um, it was called it? A Good Stock, yeah, by Melissa Ross. Yeah, yeah Alicia that's right. And Heather Lind and Nate uh, Miller and Grant Teller. Yeah, it was a good cast. Yeah. So how are you feeling? How are you doing? Are you, are you like self-quarantining? Are you... Well, we how's are pretty much. Yeah, pretty we much. Are, we live in Midtown, and um, we we uh have only been going out for groceries. Or Chris will go out for my husband. We'll go out for a um, out for a run. Uh, I went out on Monday to the store, and then before that, I didn't leave until Friday, Thursday and Friday. I did shopping. So we've kind of been like on lockdown on a, not. Oh, massive lockdown, but like, you know, just out for essentials since last Wednesday, pretty much. I had an event last Wednesday and then we were like, mm, nope. It's been a full week. We were... Yeah. 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 And he's a Broadway actor too. Um, so you guys have both, I assume, are auditions off? I heard that 
some auditions were still being Weeks. held and there was like a request. I know. I haven't yeah. done, I haven't had to do anything. He had to do an MP3 and then he was told he was on hold for something else. And I was like, when are they going to do it? So I know people are still doing self takes right now. And I think people are just trying to like optimistically, you know, keep things lined up and, and keep things that are, are going, going down the path happening. Yeah. Um, which I love, which I think is great. Yeah, I think that in addition to, you know, like moving forward as if assuming that things will get back on track in a way that we recognize, I think that also, um, I've heard from a lot of people who are rethinking how art is made. And, you know, like you could write a scripted, uh, you know, two hander that takes place with two people in separate rooms who can only communicate by FaceTime and yeah. actually perform it on Instagram Live. You know, yeah, I've heard of a like lot Dominique of Dominique Morisot did that. And, you know, we got a couple of world class actors to do it. How many people would tune in for something like that? I know we're I'm in a, a few different talks of one thing that was supposed to happen in April. Another thing that's kind of a, a newer idea. Like I'm already like, you know, people are like, Hey, would you be interested in doing this? Or, and I'm like doing a master class for primary stages and everybody's trying to, you know what I mean? Find ways to stay involved and, and either figure out the things we were already planning or maybe making new things. Um, so people have been busy. I've been on, you know, a lot of Zoom and, and FaceTime calls. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing class. how, like some people that that I I reached out to and I was like, do you want to do an Instagram Live with me? Um, I had a couple of people who were like, I'd love to, but I've literally committed to 12 things I in know. the next people, few days because I know, I had people a, are so I excited gonna... to create and that's amazing. I know, it's really great. It's like definitely there's a lot of stuff I had. A, I'm, I'm sure they're all right with it. I'm missing a faculty meeting right now. I teach at Brooklyn College. I just teach one class and I have an amazing class of second year MFAs and I had my first class with them this morning. Uh, Wait, your first is, class ever or your first did? Sorry, my class. first class since we got, since everything kind of happened. So it was the first Zoom class. And uh -huh. it was incredible to like see how it could work and also I was so happy to see them because I hadn't seen them in two weeks. And uh, it's interesting to hear like how student actors are coping, you know what I mean? And dealing with, they're about to enter the business. Oh my God. You know, like we talked about all that kind of thing. And uh, it was just great to see them. It was just great to see how they were doing. And, you know, it's good to check in with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, think so. Do you, I so took do a shower. You, like, do you like do it from bed? I feel like that would be the temptation. I know. To be I like, know. oh, I gotta teach I my class and I'll wake up in five minutes and. I know. I I was like, okay, what is appropriate? And also, like, I know they're like, you should do all the normal things. I think you're saying as we, you know, they're like, you should go for uh, take a shower and get dressed. And I'm like, I just have not been able to manage that every day. I, yeah. I and so this morning, I was this. like, I know. I was like, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna take a shower. But then I took a shower, but I put on a clean pair of PJ pants. To yes, teach class. you did. So girl. It's, <laughs> it's like I, I, I wore different clothes. You know, I changed. So I feel like that counts. I feel like that's all right. Oh, it totally. It's like, look, we've all got to do what we can do right now. I know. I know. I, I, I you know, I never wash my hair that much, so that's kind of holding true. <laughs> it's always dirty. It's just always. So dirty. I'm in this. I have developed this new pattern for like this new morning routine. And I'm not really somebody who has a traditional morning routine because uh -huh. every day looks different for me. Yeah. It really um, is. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have like Mondays and Wednesdays, I host a podcast, which right now I'm not going into the studio to do it. I'm actually repurposing some of these interviews to do that, yeah. um, uh, for that. But, um, a neighbor of mine who must be one apartment either above, below, or to one side of me has apparently mm -hmm. left town but left an alarm on at 6.45 a.m. Monday through Friday. So it goes off for an oh, hour. Oh, my God. Oh and my it God. is very loud. And, yeah, so it goes off from 6.45 to 7.45. And at first, the first day it happened, I, which was last Friday, I was – pissed and I was like oh my god they better come home this weekend I mean, that's because, a lot that's a lot um, <laughs> an hour. but I have decided that 
I'm going to, I, so I'm very much like, uh, I had a few years ago, I had kind of a spiritual crisis where I was like, you know, all the magic I used to believe in is just a crock and, you know, consciousness is an accident. And like, I went into this really dark place about all my spirituality. And then I, I, in the last couple of years, I've been allowing myself to use my experience as a theatrical audience member to um, suspend disbelief and be like, all right, well, I can still believe in like the big bang in science and, you know, and know yeah. the statistical possibilities of coincidences happening. And, and I can like set that aside and go into my days as if I believed in magic because it brings me joy and that allows me to bring other people joy. So I've decided that for the sake of my own sanity, I've decided mm -hmm. that that alarm that goes off every day at 6.45 a.m. is an alarm for me from the universe that says, get up and meditate and do some writing and then go back to bed. You're amazing. So for the last, I don't know, so I did it Monday. My, this is the fourth day in a row I've done it. I've uh -huh. meditated for half an hour and written for at least half an hour. The first day I wrote for like an hour and a half. And then I went back to bed and slept till 11. And I got up and I already felt super accomplished. Oh and my so God. Now I'm kind of like, this alarm that my neighbor forgot to turn off might be the best thing that could have happened to me. You're that's I, I am so, I'm so impressed by that. Like I think that is a really good embrace of all the situations. I'm such not a morning. I'm so not a morning person. I never really have been. Even when I'm shooting something and I get on set and it's like eight a.m. and they're like, "Oh, well, we can't see your eyes yet." I'm like, "You won't be able to see them until noon." I just <laughs> noon. Like it doesn't matter how much TV and film I do. I just can't like get it together. Like I'm always. I don't think. Sure. I don't think I could be a morning person. Like, I don't think I could do that if I had to be up for the rest of the day. But because yeah. I, because my two things now are my 645 uh, mental health session mm -hmm. and then my 5, 6, or 7 p.m. support group, those yeah. are the only things I'm doing. So, great. so you can take a nap in between, you can run out. Yeah, it doesn't nap. even feel like a nap. It feels like the second half of my night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yes. and I feel proud of myself that I was able to be like, if I believed in magic, then this would be a sign from the universe. <laughs> and so maybe it's really magic. Who knows? <laughs> That's a lot. Um, you want to keep singing? <laughs> I I was like I I had to sing at this benefit, and I was like. I had such a good time, and then everything is happening. It's hard. Like I find it hard to sing when. Singing is such a, a like a mind fuck for me, actually. Like in terms really? of, yeah, like in terms of how um, how it's tied up with the, my physical and like emotional self. Mm. This sounds so precious, but uh, because I'm not as like I don't I, I don't sing like for four years straight. You know, I sing like every five years. You know, people hear me sing. I'm sure, that's great for everyone. Are you I'm taking so less? Like, do you do voice lessons? Um, I mean, I do coaching because I'll go in for uh -huh. but I, you know, like I, 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 you know, I really love doing a little bit of everything, you know, uh -huh. and I always thought, I always thought I would just be, when I was 16, I'd be like, well, I'm going to be in a music all the time. I'm going to be in music. <laughs> like that's where I just like saw my life going, which is funny now that I just like, I just, you know, I do so many other things. I also didn't know certain things existed, like living playwrights, you know, really, when I was, <laughs> I was like, they're all dead. You were like, I'm going to be just doing Gilbert and Sullivan my whole life. <laughs> I know this cool poor guy. It's great. Um, so, and because I think I was singing so young, it was my first thing I did. And so it's so like entwined. And, and because I went to so many years of school, I think, you know, too, which was great, but also you get a lot of different voice teachers, you get a lot of different things being told to you. And so, you know, it's so fun to do things for me when I'm like, oh, singing was fun. This was a fun, like when I got to do the workshop of uh, The Notebook, a wonderful new musical. Yeah. I mean, it, it was like such a fun thing to sing because the I songs didn't know, are amazing. know that you were doing that workshop. Yeah. Ooh. And um, I can say that that was out in the universe. I can say that on Playbill that I did, that I, it was on Playbill. I can say that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I remember when the workshops were happening, I just somehow didn't register that you were doing yeah. it. Yeah, uh, so it was, um, 
it was like a, it was it was so uh, great to remember like that I love singing because the team is amazing and Ingrid Michaelson writes great songs and I was just like finding myself singing all the time stuff from the show and Chris was like you're singing so much and I'm like yeah I'm really loving it and like and singing it's, around and, the around the apartment oh yeah yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so speaking of the apartment and your husband, who's also yes. an actor, um, so right, I'm at the point right now where I'm feeling lonely because I live alone, and I usually I usually love living alone, and I of course in this city. I mean, oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah. But now, like today, I had a really rough morning where I was like, I don't know when I'll ever be hugged again, and my boyfriend lives in another state. My family's all the way on the other coast and so right, right, you know right, and like based. even I went outside today but I'm trying to keep six feet away yeah, like away from that. people and so so there's part of me that's like oh if I lived with someone it would be so lovely but I also know that a week after being confined to space with someone even somebody I loved I'd probably <laughs> like want to murder <laughs> well I mean we have you know I'm in an apartment full of boys there's the husband there's the two boy cats <laughs> So it's like, there's a lot of testosterone roaming uh -huh. around my apartment. But um, I, one great blessing, and all our friends, if you're listening, who've all written and been like, aren't you so glad you have that balcony? And yes, we're very glad. We're very yeah. lucky. We have a smidge of outdoor space that Chris has, you know, as being the Wisconsin guy, he has decked out. And, it, and it's, that's been a nice sanity. It always is a nice little bit of sanity because one of us can say, I'm going outside and, you know, we can't hear each other. We can't, like, <laughs> so that's been really nice. Um, and and I think Chris that is such a, like, he's such a, like, not even a handy guy. He I is... think that's a good, that's a good question. Well, but I think that <laughs> when I say handy, I, in New York, I think of somebody who can, like, you know, fix a leaky faucet or a running toilet or something. But Chris is, like, making like woodworking with oh, crafty too. Yeah, he's crafty and like easy. making bowls and spoons and furniture and stuff. Oh yeah. oh yeah. We're gonna have like ten different kinds of lamp designs at the end of this and um, Oh yeah. He also does like Yeah like, absolutely the oh, lamp. Look, I have on my desk I have this antique fan. <gasps> and I see like, oh, this is the God. kind of thing he would that love to make that a lamp coffee would make into a lamp. I have two of these actually. Oh my There's God, one would be in so cute. Holland. I may have that to would be so cute. He would love to do that. Once I have an he income loves, again, you know. I'll commission him to do it. Well, his his work has been seen in King Kong dressing room, at Space Rider Farm, at another random store somewhere. Like his his stuff is funny. Like if you go in, you can see. I think you'd know it anywhere you saw it, and it's in little sneaky places. Um, yeah, but it's not. Oh, it is good so because we both like to craft a lot, and we call it homesteading. We used to think that was funny the last week. We've been like, oh my God, we've been practicing. We're homesteading, like baking bread. And I like to make stock from scratch and, you know, crafts and crochet and sewing. I'm behind I on like baby Watching gifts Netflix me. and seamless ordering, um, although not so cool. much lately. I've been cooking. That's good. I know. We've been doing a lot of cooking. I, I thought, I was like, oh my God, this would be so great to read so much. But I found myself not quite able to settle into books and I've been a little um I've been a little anxious so it's been like a lot of talking a lot of look a lot of on Twitter reading news a lot of um seeing what's happening a lot of emails a lot of getting in touch with family that we had family in different places so everybody just got like settled two days ago um so I had a lot of like anxiety like family anxiety mm. of like where's everyone, everybody, yeah. Um, so that kind of like, that That was like, yesterday was a good day. So like, all right, people are in place. I can maybe like enjoy this somehow. You know, it's hard, right? We have right? a comment in, we have a reference in the comment that suggests audiobooks. So Yes, my husband, I, yeah, he, Chris did go and do some pickups for uh, an audiobook on Friday. He went, which is a perfect job. You're in a booth by yourself. They're always wiped down anyway. Very, and he went in. Oh, I think that, I think my guess is that RJ Clark writer is suggesting listening to them as a oh. to <laughs> trying to read a book. Like, yeah, yes, totally if you can get work, audiobooks. if you can get work reading audiobooks, do it. <laughs> I mean, maybe he was suggesting that as a, an employment strategy. Oh. But... He's just, he's totally like suggesting it as, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, RJ Clark. Um, 
Um, that's a great idea. I should listen to them. Instead of just um, I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and I've actually found that um, there are a couple of great apps that connect with uh, public libraries around the country, and you can and you can only check them out if you have a library card from that place. But my mom and sister and I all share an account, nice. so we have access to every every library that any of us has ever been to. Um, the Bay Area, right? Yeah, and in California, if you have a California driver's license, you can get a library card at any California library. So whenever they travel to any That's new surprised. county. They yeah. get, they make it a point to stop at the library, get a library card, and then add it to the digital, the app. So, um, right. Libby yeah, is so, mine, right? Are you on Libby? I'm sure you are. You yeah, li Libby. yeah, Libby. And so, so many people I know spend so much money on Audible getting, um, you know, getting audiobooks that they listen to once. Yeah. And I'm not mad at Audible, especially now that they're doing original theatrical, like radio plays and stuff. Um, I know it's really cool. I just don't have the budget for that. Yeah, we'll pay. I can't keep. I couldn't pay for all the books I read. Like I could, you know what I mean? Because it's just I, I like I do book of the month club, which I love anyway. But but it was nice because I got just like two new books. I decided to get two this month, just weirdly. And then I love my Libby app. I love. Um, I, lo well, I love New Yorker. I have a subscription to New York the New Yorker. Um, I've got a good stock of Persephone books from London, a publishing house in London. So I'm behind on, you know, I have my, like my to be read shelf and looking at it right now. And, and I'm like, Oh, I could read all that in four weeks if I buckled down. But, um, it's weird. You know, I have to say, like, I, I was talking in class this morning and, and, you know, this is like a world version of, and like meta global version of an actor, um, I say this respectfully because the situation is much higher stakes, but we live in a weird like dynamic of like, okay, so maybe, you know, you've got this job in two months, but until then, what am I going to do? You, and what do you do? Do you hustle to get more work? Do you try to relax to be ready for the next job? How likely will the next job happen? You know, we're always living in this weird, um, never knowing and a, and a huge battle with my friends, my actor friends and, and, and students is like, how do you relax when you don't know where your next job is coming from? Yeah, how do you exactly. get to a point where you can say, I'm on enforced input time. I always call it input time. Like, how do you like actually not live? And, you know, I felt like I'd gotten to a good point with anxiety, but not anymore. <laughs> no, it's all, mm. it's all. Yeah. That's, I mean, off, that's so. how my life is too. I think any freelancer and actors, even the most successful ones are essentially freelancers because unless you're like the one person who's been working in the Phantom of the Opera pit for 30 years, you know, you're like, no. and even they are not going to work right now. Um, but it's a very, it's a job, it, you know, it's a profession where you just don't know where your next job is coming from or your next paycheck is coming from. I feel yeah. like the only way yeah. to really feel secure and this is just a guess as an actor is if you've also, like if you've been successful enough that you can be on a producer on a TV show that you're on. Oh yeah. And then, oh, yeah. because then when the show goes into syndication, you just keep getting checks. <laughs> oh yeah. And if you live a life where you're, but I, I will say, I've, you know, worked with a lot of different uh, income level people and, and, and people where you look from the outside where you're like, well, if only I had, you know, if I only had that, then I wouldn't worry. But I have worked with people who never have to work again a day in their lives and can live an extravagant lifestyle with that stockpile, right? And it's still like, oh, my phone's not ringing. And, it, and, and part of me is like, it doesn't have to ring, isn't that great? And then the other part of me is like, yeah, we all still wanna like, feel like we're contributing and we all wanna be a part of, of this. We all wanna be a part of the community. And, and you know, that was a fluke maybe that that person made enough money to stop, yeah. you know, or, so it's like, I, I think when I was a younger actor, I was like, oh, if I, only fill in the blank then I'll never fill in the other blank and, mm -hmm. and yeah it's you only true. book that big Broadway musical Rocky <laughs> <laughs> then everything um I know yeah. oh my god yeah well maybe oh maybe the I don't know maybe the world will now appreciate the plight of the, the anxiety of the actor or the freelancer a little bit more now that nobody knows the where world, the next could... is coming from I know. And I feel like so much of the world has changed in the 20 years that I've been a professional actor. The world has changed a lot, like from, 
like when I would go to like cookouts when I was out of school, I'd be like, um, you know, my relatives would be like, well, how do you live not knowing day to day what, what is going to happen to you? And like, I didn't say this because I love them. But I was thinking, you don't know what's going to happen day to day. You could die tomorrow, Aunt whoever. <laughs> but um, I did think that. Because I thought they were just being mean to me. They were being concerned. But I, I think that now people understand the gig economy is different than it was in 2001 and 2000. It, it's a different when you understanding. Started... Globally. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. When you started, did you have an answering service? Did you have a, like, did you have to call I did. your service? I did. I did. I had it. I'm phone, obsessed with I this. Also, oh my god, it was so crazy. Did you? You don't. Rem do you remember these at all? No, I don't know if you. I, I never had that. Um, I. Yeah. I was. I mean, I've never been a theater actor. When I was a teenager, I did a fair amount of commercial print modeling um, as like the little <gasps> girl next door. Um, nice. I was on a Nintendo game box. I did an ad. For oh my this. god the original, um, uh, like one of the original mobile phone companies was called GTE Mobile Net. And they, at, when I was 14, I guess there must not have been Photoshop at the time because they needed a two page magazine spread of this, of like just a mouth. <laughs> and they said they needed to hire someone who was 14 because even like a 20 year old had lines around it. Oh, that's sure, that it's gonna be that close. Yes. Yeah, so they so they made me wax my face and I don't have that much hair. They, no. made me, <laughs> they made me wax my face and then they took this picture like this that I still have. Um, um, but I, that was always like phone calls from an agent. I was always working with an agent okay. at that point. Um, and then, and then I did, I did that until I went to college and a little bit after college. Then when I moved to New York, I just stopped. And so I haven't, I had a like 60 hour a week job for, um, you know, for my first 10 years in the city. So, yeah. and now yeah. I'm just a one man operation and it's all been social media based. So, yeah, yeah. I had an answering service for a minute. I never had a pager that was like before. <laughs> But I had an answer service and then it was cell phones. I got my first cell phone in 2000 and it was like, and same number. Like I just have always. Wow, do you have a 212 cell phone? I don't, 917. Uh -huh. I didn't have their, yeah, I didn't get it. I didn't get a 212. I was like, Every the, once in a while I meet somebody whose number is 212 and I'm like, oh, landline? And they're like, nope, original it's cell phone. It's a, That's impressive. That's I even hard. have a friend who lives in Australia and has lived there for 10 years, but she still keeps her American cell phone. Um, oh, yeah. And pays like the most basic service because <laughs> she's numbers. like, you can't, can't give up a two one two. No, no, definitely not. Yeah, the only two one twos I ever had were were landlines in New York mm -hmm. for sure. And then I didn't have a, a landline after. Do you think we all need landlines? I mean, I don't know. I go back and forth between being like, what a nice break we're all having, and then being like, the world will never be the same. Like this is the apocalypse. And, you know, like, I might never, you know, I may never have physical contact with another human being again in my life, you know? And so do we need landlines? I don't know. I, I If the world is ending, then cell phone towers are probably going to be one of the first things to go. But I don't right? know like, a harbinger of but, doom. But will they have landlines? Either? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We, I mean, look, I think to be a New Yorker, to be anyone in this business, you know, you're always a little bit like, oh, when it all goes, to you know, there's always that. What's like, the funny way of rent? I'm a New Yorker, fears my life. I know, I know. <laughs> it's like literally, I know. Someone said balancing between being okay and then terrified. That's, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much, you know, and like trying to laugh. Like uh, we were watching a lot of animal videos in our house. We're doing a lot of that, you know. Oh, that's good. You know what my favorite YouTube um, distraction is? Is TV mm. commercials from the 80s. Oh, it my is, God. You can find these. these it sounds like, really comforting. Yeah, well, and it's so funny, especially when there are things like, you know, an Easy Bake Oven or something where they're so non-politically correct. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> do you want to be a good little girl like your mommy? Learn how to bake, you know? And they're they're cringe worthy and we'll be like like I, I will sometimes watch these with my boyfriend and we'll be like oh 
my gosh, this was so inappropriate, you know, oh or, God. or just, you know, and we're like, oh, it was a different time, but it is, it is, uh, woof, like, it's, it's so funny until you realize that it was real life. I know. I know, I'm sure that you have read or heard of it. I, I, I know everybody's talking about it, the, uh, Station Eleven, the book. Oh, yeah, um, by yeah, Emily. I read it, like, a year yeah. ago. I've been thinking about it a lot. Yeah, same. I know, everyone's like, Everyone's just being like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. And then it's like, I mean, I, I am very encouraged. Story, you know, stories find their, I don't mean to sound too, like, flip or, or sunny. Uh I certainly don't necessarily feel that way, but I feel that we all care about stories. There's Kelly O'Connor. Yeah. We all care just, about um, stories. Uh, I knew he'd pop up. I, we, all care about, we all care about stories and we all want to keep telling them to each other. That's why we're all on these things, you know, yeah. like it's so primal to like sit down around a campfire FaceTime and just be like, what's your story today? And what's my story today? And I find that pretty incredible and pretty um, heartening. And I find it, I know, uh, positive isn't the right thing, but, because it's not the right, you write, but, but um, solid, so, what's solid and positive, you know what, like just inspiring and, and profound. That's what I find. I find it profound oh, yeah. that That's people never kind of want to stop sharing their stories, whether that has a big set with a boxing ring or whether that has... <laughs> Two people in a box on a screen. It's storytelling. Bam, 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 right. bam, well, bam, bam, so whenever I hear is, it. What is so great about about Station Eleven, the book, is that uh, it centers around it's to like full on apocalypse. It's like what would happen if you know ninety nine percent of the world was wiped out by this virus, and then everybody else had to figure out how to survive. Um, but it centers around a traveling Shakespeare troupe, who <laughs> who are like the art must go on and you know it's it's sort of like what the walking dead would be if there weren't zombies and yeah and yeah. when it comes down to the basest instincts we have and the basest things we need to survive it's like food water shelter and art and Each other. that no, i find art. very uplifting i mean i do I, too. I think that there's a way I think there's a way that we look at it as very expendable in our particular culture, in our American culture. We look at it as silly Certainly or expendable. And much of it, our schools disposable. Yeah, I know. I know. And I think a lot of it can be silly. And that's the beautiful thing. Humans are silly. And humans are deep. And humans want love. And humans want to give hugs. And, you know, it's all that, like, basic stuff that, like, I, uh, a friend of mine runs a theater in Virginia. And she went to this awesome uh, conference with, uh, you know, she was invited as a theater maker. And then there were like, you know, chemo doctors there and people who are researching. Mm. And she's like, I want to put on plays. And then one of the doctors was like, we help people live so they can enjoy plays. Like we all do the, we're all working towards the same thing because nobody wants to spend their life, you know, recovering from cancer. They want to spend their life talking to other people and living and breathing and singing together, you know, and I don't, I don't think we're any better than anyone, but I don't think we're any worse. I, I think that we're just superhuman and, and we all have our part. We literally all have our part to play like the amazing nurses and doctors right now. And the people in our grocery stores, Oh my God. Oh, and the people at the liquor stores. <laughs> Seriously. Like we talked about, we talked about um, like, necessary what is, what's the term they're using like everyone has to stay inside except essential workers <laughs> it's like <laughs> i think that they're considering the liquor stores essential you know they say that they say I that mean, nicotine and alcohol are recession free businesses because the worse things get the more people want to turn to their vices um, yeah, speaking yeah. of distractions uh today the new trailer for billions came out uh, don't know what? if you watched it, but the season five billions trailer came out, and uh, well, there was distinctly not enough Kelly O'Coin dollar bill in it, and also not enough. Is there ever enough Kelly O'Coin? Yeah. I mean, probably not for us, but uh, I'm very excited to finally get billions back, although not till May. 
Kelly, can oh, you put in a call and see if they'll bring it back sooner, just in light of the current? I wonder if they can. Yeah, right? The people, did you see, I'm excited about Emma being available on home in demand, on demand sooner than they were going to, I really wanted to see that. I'm like, well, now I'm going to see it sooner than I would have, because that's- Which one? Emma. I mean, the new oh, Emma, yeah. the new, there's Kelly, who said smiley, smiley. Yeah, maybe. he's just like, mm -hmm. and he's like, okay, I can't talk about it. <laughs> No, I think he's like, yes, praise. Um, what I, he said, I want it. Like, yeah. He, here's why Showtime definitely won't do that. Because they so, it's so obvious to me that they carefully make um, Homeland and Billions not available at the same time. Because I'm always like, oh, I'm just going to subscribe monthly until Homeland is over. And then as soon as Homeland is over, Billions starts again. And so I'm like, well, I can't cancel oh. it now. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're totally right. I've never even thought like that's a, see, that's a producer programmer right there. That's yeah, like huh? someone who knows. <laughs> that's the way. Yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's so true. Cause they know it's the same similar audience where they want to keep people paying for that. <laughs> yes, that is. Okay. So, um, anybody want to chime in with how you're feeling today? Does anybody need like a virtual hug from us? No, or a little, <laughs> do you know one thing that, um, um, <laughs> oh, yes, I'm into you, Kelly. You better believe it. Um, I, uh, I dollar bill. I have a thing. I know. I had a thing from, you know, Dan, Dan Danny Goldstein, who just directed the beautiful, um, unknown soldier at Playwrights. Mm -hmm. Um, which I didn't which get was, to see. I was oh, sorry, wrote. He, he wrote it. Trip Coleman directed it, um, yeah. but he is a director too. It was wonderful, and we got to see it. And Danny posted on his Facebook that if you get to, you know, everyone's doing the hand washing. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone's. Oh, hi Denver. Oh, it's snowing in Denver. That's lovely. Oh, yeah, Stay that's warm. my friend Kim. It's nice <laughs> I'm not laughing. Creepy tech Oh my god. <laughs> Because he was like, you're into me, Broadway girl. And I was like, yeah. And then he was like, I mean, on I to me. Like, Oops. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, both um, are true. Let's, Danny, just, let's admit it. I know. I know. Danny posted that if you get to, there's a stopping point for the witch's wrap. It's, you're done washing your hands. And, um, oh, really? and I tried it. Yeah. But uh, mine's a little later because I do it a little faster. Because I was like, Danny, that's too soon. And you really have to like, cause I'm like, I'm like, I'm doing this thing, you know, sorry, I'm trying. Oh yeah. You know, too. I'm like this when, thing. When and my moms were and, little, my nieces were little, I used to say fronts and backs and in-betweens. And now I'm doing that to myself, fronts and backs and in-betweens. That's um, true. Pranta, and it's like, get in between. Yeah. Burr, 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 burr. I know. Um, well, then every once yeah. in a while I'll be wearing short sleeves and like elbow bump someone. And then I'm like, Oh no, now I have to like sanitize my elbows. I know, I did find a good deal. I found hand sanitizer. I don't know if it's still there. It's not, it's not like American hand sanitizer. It's Turkish um, households have, it's this uh, Duru Colonia. It's like a, it's kind of like a body spray, but it's also, they have it, I guess is what the clerk told me. It might be a big joke on me. It was a, uh, it was, they have it in Turkish households and you spray it when you walk in to just like, Oh, you know, to say hello, you know, so you're having a little freshening up as you go into someone's home. Yeah, same. The lotion. Oh my God. Oh my God. We all I, have my like hands are all red skin. and chapped. I've been using like um, Vaseline to try to not have oh cracks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's Mark really Subi. Like... Hi, darling. How are you Who doing? Is that? Are you good? Mark Subius, who's an amazing agent and um, representative. Gorgeous writers, oh my God, and directors. Hi, um, I hope you're doing well. Good, good. Um, yeah, and, and so I found this stuff and it smells really great and it was three ninety nine, and it was like a bottle this big, whatever that is. And where did you find it? At the Amish market on 9th Avenue between 49th and 50th, mm -hmm. which is extremely well stocked. Extremely well stocked. Great. I'll Toilet that paper, in everything. I actually found a couple of tiny bottles, like the one ounce bottles of hand sanitizer in a basket where I've literally, I found them in my apartment. I found them in a basket. Oh, you I found was... them. 
found them, found them, literally found them, and also two little packs of wipes, of antibacterial wipes that I put in my, that I just throw everything in this basket when I come home from a trip with free samples. <laughs> so good. That's so good. I yeah. thought, can I please ask you something? Who's this, 18? Who's yeah, this? somebody wants to ask us something. I, I know. Just, for that's it. what the comments are oh, here for. Hi, Jelani. Jelani was my very first guest on the support group. Oh, oh my God. And, uh, and he sang, he sang a song from Hercules and he, oh sang, my God. And he sang a song from Hamilton, which oh we're now officially God. campaigning to get him to play the title character in Hamilton. Well, I mean, my God. I mean, you did just reference the witch's rap. Uh, right. Do you want to, uh, should we, well, let's try, let's try washing our hands and see where we get to with it. Should we do Are that? We do you know it? Yeah. Do you know no, it? I, I'm not well enough. I beat her, you know, clap along to it. I mean, it's, I haven't rehearsed it. I haven't sung it in five years. So I don't know if I, is it okay? It has not been five years. Oh yeah. It has been five years. Since she Into the Woods? Since Into the Woods. Oh, you're yeah. right. Because it was before my Broadway girl reveal. It was right before. It right was, before. Was, and you were going to be sick when I went I to the know. show and I was planning on telling you. I know. I oh know. My gosh, that was I so know. funny. Okay, wait. So we're are we taking our phones into the bathroom to wash our hands while you? Do oh my god! Are we are we doing a bathroom wash or are we do? I was just gonna like do a fake wash, but do we have to do a real? Do we have to do a real wash? We don't have to, but we can. <laughs> I can do it. Okay, let's do it. do it. All right, let's do it. We'll go into um. Yeah, we'll do a little like <laughs> a little tour. Who knows what my bathroom? Field trip. Like. Field trip. I have no idea what my bathroom will look like. I'll, I know I have cute wallpaper, so I'll try and get the wallpaper. I'd like to just take this moment to show everybody that I, I'm i using my crazy for you towel that was oh my God, in 1992 at my very first Broadway show. Uh -huh. So that was fun. That's good. I'm I still using that. it. I'm trying to like, all right, I think that won't fall. I think that won't fall. This is, <laughs> are you liking it? I know, we're washing our hands. All right. So, so this is Danny Goldstein, famous, you know, uh, writer, director, thinks that you need his point of stopping. He thinks that it stops at, um, I should have turned him into a stone. That's what he thinks we should stop at. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so hilarious. So oh my God. I'm going to just kind of get a little more, I'm going to get a little more solid here. I mean, shouldn't we all? <laughs> um, so he thinks that's the stopping point. I think I sing it a little faster than that. So, okay. so see, you're going to look at my good wallpaper that my husband picked out, which is very cute. Groovy. Pretty groovy. All right, okay. so we're just going to see where we get to. Will you, how, should we time it? Is, is it 20 seconds? Is that the deal? Uh, yeah, 20 seconds. I don't have, my only timer's on my watch. Can somebody tell us in the comments? I'm, you know what, RJ Clark is watching. He says, this is everything. I'm going to have him. Uh, All right, be our official timekeeper. Yeah, that seems to be a good plan. All right. All right, I think that this won't fall. Oh my God, sorry. I'm like, I had it all beautifully set up, but now, all right, all right, all right. So, I hope I Okay, so I'm getting it, but. All right, I am too. Okay, ready? Okay, ready. You ready? Foam soap, yep. All right. Oh, that's fancy. I don't have bubble soap. I just use it. All right. Ready? Here we go. Greens, greens, and nothing but greens. Parsley, peppers, cabbages, and celery. There I some water, press, and fiddle ferns, and lettuce. He said, all right. But it wasn't quite, because I caught him in the autumn in my garden one night. He was robbing me, raping me. Who is that? Rudy Tumaris Vega. Reading my arugula and ripping up the rabbi and my champion, my favorite. I should have laid a spell on him right there. I could have been turned him into a stone or a dog or a chair. Ha ha ha, she laughed. But I let him have the rabbi and I lost his spare. In return, however, oh. there's 20. I said, there, spare. You can let me have the baby that your wife will bear. Ooh, ooh. And we'll call it square. <laughs> um, <laughs> you went over 20 seconds, but I was not about to stop you. <laughs> I think you got to, um, to the ch where the child will bear, the child will bear. Okay, yeah, that's what I told Danny. I was like, I think that I go, to, I'm a little bit faster than, than St. Bernadette. I'm a smidge faster. 
Um, but our hands are really clean. And I don't think that, um, you know, beloved Steve Sondheim would be mad at us um, using the witch's wrap for a good health um, purpose. No, I think he'd love it. In fact, I'm going to cut that part out and like put it everywhere so that people oh can my watch God. it. People can watch it um, and wash their hands along with us. I'd also like to welcome um, Sarah Beth Zivitz, who's a um, Broadway producer, and Luis Salgado, an amazing actor and choreographer, Luis, who have both hi, joined the Luis. conversation. Luis is going to be a guest next week. We don't have a date yet, um, but he's going to join the support group. And I don't know. I think Love that was it. so fun. Like, one thing I, I hope that I got the words right. My apologies for Just getting lyric chunks. I'm not standing on a table with an old blanket on my head. With <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like hard to remember. And it's been five years. Like it's been, um, someone said to me today, talking about that, and they were like, would you remember Bernadette's timing or your timing? And I'm like, I don't know. Because okay. I've you know, you, you learn it a certain way, right? And then, and then Arabeth says, sing and again. Then, <laughs> oh, God. Did you have a solo in Rocky? Ha uh -huh. ha. I did for four days. And then they cut it. And then they wrote a new song. And then I did that one night only. And then that got cut. They kind of, it was, um, it was kind of like a, I was the only character that was new for Rocky. The only Gloria, they were like, right? we needed, you know, yeah, they wanted another woman to mm -hmm. talk, which was a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and have you know what I mean? Another woman be in the main cast, and <laughs> um, and then as things were shaping through previews, I think that the things that were not in the movie were the things that were kind of the first to go. Yeah, um, and and so that was <laughs> what was the name of the song. Uh, the first, the original one was called Philly Pie, and it was because it's set in Philly, which is pretty funny. Oh, pizza, pizza pie? Uh, it's it was, uh, it was a dance. It, it was kind of a made up thing. Sorry, I'm trying to think of how it goes. <laughs> It was really cute. It was like this really like up tempo. They were they were dancing. We were dancing. Um, you and Andy? No, it was me and the two the women Michelle Ravena and Jenny Stern. They played my friends. It was like there was a girl gang kind of. I know it uh -huh. didn't all make it, but we were in the pet shop and the 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 lights yeah. would flash with the fish glowing. Um, yeah, Wait, were they dancing. those big round like, lights? Yeah. Those big round colorful lights. Yeah. Remember that I I had those for a while. I like I bought them at the Broadway flea market. Didn't I get? Didn't oh I give them God. to you? No, I do and, not have them. I love them. Yeah, well, I no longer I have them love... either. So <laughs> I don't know where like, it was, I but I do have some flamingos <laughs> from the rose tattoo that I got as they were on. They were loading out on the day, and we're like, we'll take some of those. Um, but I did sing. Then then they wrote one song for one night, and I sang a. I sang that song for the benefit last week and I had not looked at it. We sang it one night only one night. And it was like February 20th, 2014. I only know that cause I looked it up for the thing last week. I would never be able to pull that out of my head. And so I was like, which benefit was, was this? It was for primary stages oh. last week. It was, uh, um, uh, uh, able to go to benefits. <sighs> I went to the roundabout benefit a couple weeks ago and Cindy Lauper performed. Oh my God. It was like an eight song greatest hits concert of like my childhood idol. And uh, oh was, my God. It was amazing. And like Alan Cumming got up and sang with her and he was being she honored. Was. So yeah. I was out one night when they were doing Three Penny Opera. We were all at Bar Central one night. It was a small group. I wasn't with them, they, but I was with other people and everyone just started singing and there was one of the tenors from when they did the when they did Moulin Rouge the the opera remember when they did the opera Moulin Rouge like this is going back a while. this is going way back they did this like uh, you know and it might uh, have been before I moved here you thought, um, yeah this would have been 2005 2006 that I moved here in 2005 so I just <laughs> and I and I was so I was like this is when Sirius Satellite Radio was brand new and yeah. it was like startup culture and they plucked all of the like 
really super driven 23 and 20, 24 year old radio personalities from every market. And we were going to work being like, we're creating this new thing no one's ever seen before. And so yeah. I had no time for Broadway or anything else. We were, we were making, we were inventing yep. a new audio art form, which now is oh so ubiquitous. It's like hard to believe that even existed. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Like just what has changed even in the last 10, 12 years in terms of like podcasting and the radio world yeah. and streaming, TV, a whole different social media. Yeah. I, I do feel like this whole, whatever we're in, whatever will be, things will, again, it will change, of course, the world and also the industry uh, in mm -hmm. a, a way that we don't know yet. And it'll yeah, be interesting to say, see. Um, the art, there, it's going to be an artistic baby boom. Um, this is a term I've used like in the last three or four support groups, but like, I just, I feel like every artist I know has something where they're like, especially the, like the working ones, the ones that never stop working are always like, man, if only I had a month to just create the thing. Oh, no. And now. And where you don't have, have to like thing. be. Yeah. Where you don't have, my hand smells so good. Where you don't <laughs> have to be um, <laughs> auditioning or. Um, you know what I mean? Auditioning or doing reading, you know, like literally there's nothing. So yeah, you don't really get that a lot. I mean, I, I, I said to Chris two weeks ago, this is hilarious now. I mean, not, but I was like, I have such a busy March and April. There was a weekend in April. I had three different things I had to be at at once. And I was like, I don't have a day off. Once we get back from this trip, I don't have a day off. <clears throat> Excuse me. From there, it's just a normal cough, wine, just a wine <laughs> cough. Um, I, 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 uh, you're going to have to go wash your hands again. <laughs> Green screens and nothing but greens. Did I say beans, beans, and nothing but beans? I might have said I don't, that. I'm so I sorry. Know. I can dub it. I'll dub it for the right there. Um, and uh, <laughs> and I was like, I don't have a day off until like May 24th, which is just hilarious now. I'm like, yeah, I'm coordinated though. Okay. My team. I know. Uh, yeah, I'm like all dressed up with no place to go right now. But I think what I'm going to do is um, find a good Spotify playlist of like, dance songs and see if I can get my 10,000 steps just by like dancing around my oh, little room. You know, God, because I feel good. like I'm get I feel like I'm out to go to Haswell Greens to go like, you know, yeah, to go dance. Yeah. And I might make some meatballs. I'm obsessed with Allison Roman. I don't know I if you're an Allison it. Roman. Um, if you like to cook, even if you don't like to cook, she's awesome. Nothing fancy. Her book. I'm obsessed with this book. Greg Hildreth is a big Allison. I think I first wow. saw her books on his feed and she just is, um, she's just a big fan of like, okay, these are the six things you need for this amazing meal. Or here's like the one pot. And, and I'm not a big cook. I never have been like loving spending a lot of time in the kitchen or have the time. You just like to make stock from scratch. Well, but that's easy. You know, that's like a thing. That's like a thing. And, and, and she's made it so I like love cooking. I don't even know. It's like a miracle to me. It's like, what? Oh, hey, Georgia. Hi. Um, we have all these great people joining us right before we have to sign off. Do you know Instagram has an hour time limit for live broadcasts? They do? I mean, I guess they gotta like, you know. Yeah, otherwise people would be like, watch me sleep. You know? <laughs> yeah. I know that's true. Probably. I mean, you can start it up again after an hour, right, but right, right, right. I can't go all night. Yeah. yeah. Well, that has. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I would also I just like I to take this myself. opportunity. I know I mentioned I brought out my limited edition collectible Rocky sippy cup. Um, on Facebook, I have a I, I run a group called Broadway Sippy Cup Collectors that has over a thousand members. And we all like go through our closets and trade our cabinets and trade cups for ones we don't have. And in the time before the coronavirus, I would go through my, I would like go through the seats after the shows and pick up all the used cups right. and put them yeah. through the dishwasher and send them out to people all over the country who needed them. Um, Rocky is one I traded for. Um, and I do not yet have the small size Rocky. There was also like a, you know, like a rocks glass size. So if there you know was? anyone who has one, mm -hmm. yeah, there was one that was like okay. this size. Okay. Was it, is it, is it like plastic or is it just smaller? It was just like, you know what I mean? Like, like it's this, but it probably it was just but like it was that just smaller. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I only have that big Yeah, one. just like short and squat and, instead of, it was like what a single would be served in instead of a double right. or a triple. Who would get yeah. single? Um, <laughs> that somebody who only had $20 instead of 75 to spend on drinks. Awesome. Talks I know. Yeah. I know. Um, yeah. But if anybody likes the Broadway Cups, come and join us. It's a very joyful community. And we, um, we just, I don't know, it's funny. It's this like little section of Broadway fandom that likes to have things, but not necessarily the super expensive merchy type things. Um, and uh, so mm -hmm. it's fun. And you're fun. Amazing. Amazing. And I'm really happy to get, you're like, fun. this is it's the so first time we've hung out you. in literally years. <laughs> and it took a pandemic I know. to make it It's happen. like not even raining. It's not even pouring raining or anything. We're, like, totally dry. It was <laughs> pouring rain earlier today, but not anymore. And it was. I have not been. <laughs> um, it's so great to see you. I love your picture. It's really good to see it's you, so too. Cute. Thank you. Um, I really am going to clip out that that hand washing thing. In fact, Theater Mania is doing this um, this thing they call um, I don't know the hand washing challenge or something, where a Broadway actor sings a song for twenty seconds and help like raise of course their they're for the actors fund and stuff. And now yes. um, now I get right. to be in one, even though I didn't sing nor am I a Broadway actor. So totally. I'm going to go ahead and post this on your behalf. <laughs> That's so fine. That's so fine. We're, we're all, you know, washing our hands together. <laughs> Whatever brings us we'll together. Yeah. Maybe this definitely. will be my excuse to finally learn the witch's rap. Because all I know is green, it's... greens, but nothing but greens. Yeah, That's yeah. I, I don't know if I could have gone that much further. I probably, it's down there somewhere. And then I'm like, it's broccoli and broccoli, asparagus and broccoli. <laughs> like, like, I never knew what Rampian was. You know, you have to learn <laughs> whatever. But Allison Roman uses a lot of oh, greens. Yeah. I will say that. Oh, yes, she uses a lot of greens in her cooking. So, greens, greens, and Allison Roman. Meatballs, oh greens, and meatballs, and greens. Washing. Love it. <laughs> I want to see a picture of those meatballs when you're done. I'd say save me some, but I'm probably not going to see you in person for another year <laughs> until I'm let out of my house. I know. May we all be watching a show together very soon. What'd you hey, say? Hey, friend. May we all be watching a show together very soon. Yes. May we all be breathing each other's germs I am safely. hoping to be, watching, to be in the audience watching you perform in a show very soon. So we'll see. Putting that out in yes. the universe. But especially Amazing. and first the healing. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I give my love to I'm Nikki Rapkin. You missed the witch the witch rap with the yes, we'll hand on my story. As soon as we finish we'll upload to the story and you'll yes. have twenty four hours to watch it again. And hopefully I will have a recorded version up on YouTube tomorrow. But sometimes it records and sometimes it doesn't. So we'll just yeah. have to cross our fingers on that one too. Thank you, Jenny. Awesome. You're the best. Thank you. And thanks for later, everybody honey. who joined us. Stay strong, guys. We're all in Thank this together. You. Bye. Bye.